Good morning and welcome to Sunday, August 2. What a way to start August. And we are, we welcome you. I'm Janice Carey, I'm the minister at Unity of Fort Pierce. And we know that our sanctuary is closed. And I know that a lot of you are in your homes and you have your shutters up. We have our shutters up and you have your food. And we as Floridians know that we have to prepare for these storms. So today I would like to share with you a recap on what we've been talking about for the last, oh, the last six, seven weeks. And they are the steps to spiritual awakening on the Beatitudes. We'll do a little recap on that so that we are prepared for next week to step into the last Beatitude. But before we begin, what I'd like to do is let's center ourselves into a time of meditation by reading the daily word and bringing all of our energies into our own being. So the daily word today is compassion. <clears throat> I am kind and compassionate. Seeking to grow in compassion, I look to the example of Jesus. Gospel stories give many examples of Jesus showing compassion by demonstrating keen awareness of the needs and feelings of friends and strangers alike. I remember learning that Jesus did not turn away from social outcasts. He healed them and shared meals with them. His compassion fed a multitude and restored wine to a wedding reception. Upon learning that his dear friend had died, Jesus wept, even when his disciples deserted him. As he was crucified, Jesus asked God to forgive them. As I desire to grow in compassion, I know that my kind words and even simply my loving presence provide comfort. I listen deeply with my heart as well as with my ears. And from Philippians 2, let each of you, not to your own interests, look, but to the interests of others. So let's just take a moment and turn inward into our own delightful consciousness. Moving our attention into our inner sanctuary And we allow our breath to take us deeper into a sense of peace. The peace that passes all understanding. And as we are preparing, and as we allow ourselves to watch, We are just noticing the calmness that surfaces within us. As we move our attention from the surroundings and into the very I am of our being, the true I, it is that place where we know that I I'm one with God, and there is no other. It is the I-Thou awareness. We begin to release ourselves from all concern, and we retreat and rest in knowing right where we are, God is. We allow ourselves to rest in the midst of challenges, for they come and go. But what remains is that love. What remains is the awareness that I shall not be moved. 
from knowing who my source is, where my source is. I take this time of reflection where we are out of the world and into deepen my devotion to spirit. We know that the storms will come and the storms will go. But in the very atmosphere of my being, there is a stillness, there is a still point. And I devote myself to having the capacity to live from that still point. And as I am still, I allow the sense of gratitude to grow within me, for I understand that gratitude, gratefulness, thankfulness, brings such happiness, contentment, satisfaction. If there is anything that is heavy on my heart or that I have any concerns in my mind, I take this next breath and I release it out into the world. And I know that that energy will be recycled and renewed and transformed. And I breathe in the unconditional love that is everywhere present. And I can just feel myself relaxing even more deeply and allowing all things to be as they are. And I recognize that my body is a vessel, a vessel of life and energy. And it is up to me how to choose to use this life that's been given to me and this energy that comes through every breath and i choose to use it wisely i choose to give compassion to the world compassion and kindness i choose to give forgiveness to myself and to all for each one of us at times fall out of center. But I am learning how to stay centered in the awareness, in communion with the God of being. And so I bless our world and our planet with thoughts of unity and harmony. I move away from the egoic blame and shame, for that is an old paradigm that does not work. And I give love. I see the good, even when it may be challenging. I know that as I love and let love through, that is loving God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and as I give love to others, I am loving myself, for the I am is in all. And so from this inner wellspring of divine love, I bless the world and I radiate this divine, harmonizing, unifying love in every direction, to the north and to the south, to the east and to the west, and I see it surrounding and encompassing every person, nation, and every form of life. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the light of the world. I am the salt of the earth. I am the beloved. 
And I allow that awareness full reign within my being so that I can truly say that the ground on which I stand is holy. For I bring it. Holiness is everywhere. In all, through all. In every creature. And so we say thank you for this awareness. Thank you so much for this awakening to seeing that God is everywhere present. And each creature is waking up to their divine, unlimited potential discovered by love. Amen. So today, we're going to, as I shared, we're just going to do a little recap on the Beatitudes. And I like to see, think of the Beatitudes as a, uh, eight steps for awakening, really becoming conscious. Let's pull it out of the Bible and let's make it practical and applicable to us. I know that we've been doing this for a while and you, you folks have been rewriting some of these Beatitudes so that the, the words become your words and they help you remain centered in your Christ consciousness your divine self consciousness so jesus shared the beatitudes it's found in the sermon on the mount and as he shared this he it was like a, it was like a no other teaching he jesus is like an avatar and he's trying to tell people to learn how to master themselves he had mastered himself, he had mastered his mind, he had mastered his emotions so that he could walk in the world and be a blessing to the world. He could walk in the world grounded on Mother Earth and also connected to his father. So he had within him his authenticity, his powerful authenticity. He was so centered and rooted in being aware of his true divine spiritual nature. And if we look at these Beatitudes as stepping stones to how we can really put on our divine spiritual nature, you can't get a better, you can't get a better system than these Beatitudes. His mission and vision was to give to his disciples and to his followers and so that means to us today, this very same awareness. What is this awareness? This awareness that we are spiritual beings incarnated into a physical form. But not to lose sight of the fact that the truth of us is spirit. And the Beatitudes, as I said, are steps that we can attain the very, very, very same consciousness that was in Jesus. Often I've said to people, do you know the difference? between you and Jesus, your brother, the only difference would be the amount of conscious awareness you have of your true divine spiritual nature. That's the difference. Because he's our brother. He's our way shower. And this saves us from thinking that we are somehow less than that and not worthy. So this message is from, is following him so that we can move from our human consciousness into the Christ consciousness, which he absolutely developed, attained, and demonstrated in beautiful perfection. So what was Jesus' main message? If we were to have a little elevator speech here and said, well, what did Jesus come to, to teach the world? And it is my belief that his message is, the kingdom or queendom, the kingdom or queendom of heaven is within, it is among, it is in the midst of all being. Take a breath and touch that kingdom right now. He became aware that that is where the kingdom of heaven is. It isn't a place that we go after we die. It is right here and right now. 
Well, how then did Jesus attain this? Well, how did Jesus attain this awareness so clear? And how can we attain it? True awareness is cultivated and really taken into us deeper when we begin to completely drop all of our illusions, tear away our cultural conditioning and recognize every single tradition, every single culture has their own way of teaching. And not one is more true than another. Not one is more valuable than another. So we must begin then to enter the world knowing that we're in the world, but we're not of it. You see, what that means is we're not of any culture. We are global citizens. We are spiritual citizens of the universe. That's why we call Jesus sometimes an avatar. We are spiritual citizens of a universe. And this universe is a living universe and it's divine. And we are citizens of this divine living universe. So how did Jesus continuously attain this? Is that he put himself into prayer practice. We read in the Bible, it would say, Jesus went up the mountain and sat down and prayed. And when we go up a mountain, when we sit down, we are entering into our higher realm of consciousness. We take a seat. We take a seat as a witness, as a divine witness. And this just means that we center ourselves away from all the 10,000 things that come and go. And as Jesus sat down, we read, as he sat down and he centered himself in that spaciousness, in the awareness that he absolutely was rooted on Mother Earth and connected to Father Sky or Father Spirit, Father Mother Spirit. He began to speak. And the first words he said were, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Read that in. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So through this series, we've become aware that this is an invitation to empty ourselves, to empty everything we think that we know, to empty ourselves from our cultural conditioning, to empty ourselves from prejudice, prejudging, empty ourselves from the belief systems that we have picked up over the years, empty ourselves from cultural opinions, empty ourselves from any form of identifying with the material world. Empty yourself from that. You are not your thoughts. You are not your feelings. You are certainly not your political party. You are none of that. When we release all of that, we recognize those were getting in our way of our spiritual growth. And when we can let that all go, we allow ourselves to touch the unconditional love of the oneness of spirit. Blessed are the pure, poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And how do we know we're in the kingdom of heaven is we feel the peace that passes all understanding. We feel it. So the next beatitude, the second beatitude was, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. Mourning, true mourning is when our heart aches and it is reaching for something that it thinks it's missing. And guess what? There's only truly one thing that we miss that will bring the peace and the satisfaction. And that is cultivating the ability to commune, to shift our identity into being pure being.
It's also in this morning when we have lost something in the material world. Maybe we've lost a loved one. Maybe we've lost a job. Maybe we've lost a pet. We've lost something that was dear to us. We also realize that in this morning, as we turn within, we begin to feel the love that is always there. And we begin to cultivate compassion and understanding for the human condition that each one of us experiences. And that brings about the ability to forgive. Forgive ourselves for how we have judged and we still do. Forgive ourselves for not being perfect, whatever that means in the ego world. You can never be perfect. There is no such thing. But we can be excellent. I remember my friend Roberta used to say, let's just be excellent. Let's be the highest we can be at this moment. Excellence, reach for excellence, not perfection. Excellence means that you're showing up in your authentic self and you are letting your true self be expressed in this moment. And that then, you are truly being a disciple of the Christ. So let us surrender all of our belief systems, thinking that we have to have things a certain way, sound a certain way, be a certain way. And guess what happens? We're comforted. We become comfortable in our own skin. Is that not what we all want? And we feel at home. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And so the third beatitude, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Charles Fillmore wrote in the revealing word, anyone highly trained to react to all negative stimuli with love instead of an eye for an eye. Can you imagine a world without vengeance? Can you imagine a world that does not need to keep score? Can you imagine every response comes from a centeredness of love? It's another way of saying, blessed are the gentle. When we have lived enough and grown spiritually enough that we do not let our emotions and our knee-jerk reactions run away with us. We don't let our mind run away with us. But we've lived long enough and we've noticed enough that these things shall pass. And we've learned to breathe and to gentle ourselves so that we can face situations and not fly off the handle, but face situations with wisdom and be guided in what is ours to say and what is ours to do. Because truthfully, a lot of people are in prison because they didn't know how to gentle themselves. To just take a breath. And the word just ought to not be there because it takes mastering ourselves to take conscious breaths and not react. So this is an invitation for us to look at where are we still reacting and how can we gentle ourselves even more. The fourth beatitude, blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Righteousness, righteous is a talking about right use. It's a relationship. Being aligned with our own inner sense. Boy, did I learn a lot about aligning when we were putting up our shutters because they have to be in alignment so that the, the rods can go in through the little holes and clamp together. We need to be aligned 
we need to be grounded and connected communing with spirit we need to be aligned with our spiritual essence and presence and when we hunger and thirst after that when that becomes our main priority before anything else well then we shall be filled with what with satisfying satisfaction with knowing who we are with presence with being and when we are aligned in such a way we we can feel the aliveness course through our being, through our, our veins. And there's a sense of wholeness that surfaces. The fifth beatitude is, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Now, this is kind of one of my favorites because Mercy, to see mercy comes from the root word merchandise, M-E-R-E. -E. So we want to release forever this idea that God is withholding anything from us. God isn't punishing us. God never punished us. We punish ourselves. Mercy, as I said, comes from the word merchandise. And it means it's about recognizing that life depends, absolutely depends on the giving and the receiving, on the constant flow of energy, the constant energy exchange, the constant inhalation and exhalation. We must give of ourselves. We must give of our time, our talent, and our tithe to this spiritual awareness if we are to receive it we must give our attention to it we must give our time we must tithe ourselves to it holding 10 percent at least inside your own being aware of what's happening within you how are you using your breath How are we using this heart, these arms, these hands? Once we are aligned, when we are righteously aligned with pure being, notice something. We can't help but be gentle. Because as we are aligned, it gentles us. It softens us. It soothes us. And our eyes are open and we recognize the moment in the giving we receive, in the receiving we have given. It is a constant in-breath and out-breath. It is the way and the law of circulation. And we want to put ourselves in the flow of that circulation. We don't want to dam it up at all. We want to be open and receptive to all the good. And we, in order to be open and receptive to all the good, we must give all of our good. Give our good. For we have unique talents and gifts that only we can give. So the sixth beatitude is, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. In wisdom teachings, another way of saying this, would be blessed are those whose heart is not divided or whose heart is unified. You see, our heart really knows that we're all connected. We understand that our heart is the heart made of Mother Earth. And when we allow our hearts to be single, for that moment, as we are connected with our heart and we feel our heartbeat, our minds automatically become clear. They become clear of the worldly debris. So we don't covet anything. We don't need to. 
because as Charles Fillmore writes in The Revealing Word, the pure in heart are those who are completely free of the anxiety and the resentments, the selfishness, the lust, and every other form of thought and feeling that's not for the highest and best for all life. But what is the promise here as we have our hearts are pure? When our hearts are pure, we see God. The illusions drop away. We see that God is everywhere present. We cultivate spiritual perception, the capacity to see beneath the physical, the capacity to see the call for healing and help. The capacity to see that all life is of the one spirit. Every life is a beautiful, unique manifestation of our Father, Mother, God. Now, all these first six Beatitudes are preparing us they are preparing us to be filled with the truth of who we are as spiritual beings. So here comes the next two, which is applying them. So the seventh beatitude. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And I want to share with you some of the rewrites from this one. This was the last one that we, we did. And here are some of the rewrites of blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called children of God. One is happy are those who create serenity in their souls for they shall shine that peace and light into the world. Another one, the peacemakers seek to bring peace to any situation by introducing the will of God into it. Another one. Blessed are those who shine their peaceful love light, for they will always be one with God. We want to let that love light shine. Another one. Blessed are those who join us together in love, for they shall find the wisdom of God. And another, blessed are those who see the truth and who will love all better. You see, it's all about love. There isn't anything that's not about love. Remember that love is not an emotion. Love is a power that we can work with to bring about the recognition that the kingdom of heaven is amongst us, within us, and at hand. Love allows us to see that. This is not a passive beatitude, the peacemaker's beatitude. It is asking us to turn inward and to cultivate the courage of our heart and have the audacity to live in the world as our authentic self and let our light shine. Let our songs be sung and our poems be written and our stories to be told. To put down the struggles that we're not doing something right or well enough or what someone else would think, put down all of those struggles, which the world will always give us with its you know, commentary and see as Julian of Norwick saw. And she would say, all is well, all is well. All manner of things shall be well. To be a peacemaker, to be a successful peacemaker, a peaceful activist, we must be a model like the late John Lewis, like the masters who held true to their vision. What's your vision? What is your vision? How do you see the world? How do you see yourself, your place in the world? 
Be true to your vision, even in the midst of persecution. And we all face persecution of all different types to shake us from our vision of knowing that we are spiritual beings and we are incarnated in a physical form for a parenthesis, but we are eternally spiritual beings. Now next week, next Sunday, I am so proud to present next week, we are going to look at the eighth beatitude. And it reads, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And we will celebrate next week, looking in depth and honoring Black Lives Matter. And we will hear and listen to the wisdom and to the stories of two of our African-American members, Denise, Wil Denise Wilson and Monique Johnson, as they share their stories of how they use spiritual principle and thrive in this world, supporting, helping us to make an even more perfect union manifest in the world. So as I said, the first six Beatitudes prepare us to really identify ourselves as spiritual beings. And then the seventh and the eighth Beatitude we apply the first six and live them into the world. And that means that we raise our consciousness so that we can see that the kingdom of heaven is among us, between us, and in the midst of being. And this, this kingdom, this queendom is open to all of us. Thank you for joining me today. I know this is a little different way of joining this service, but I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart and I thank you in advance for supporting our service to continuously support us in these challenging times so that we can be here for you. We value these spiritual teachings. And so if you would hold your love offerings in your palms of your hands, and let us speak together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I am. And share your love offerings with us by going to our PayPal account, which can be found either on our Facebook page, Unity Facebook page, or on our website www.unityofportpierce.com. We are here for you. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. And we will hold the high watch for all of us because we behold the Christ in you. God bless. Namaste. And I will see you in our beautiful sanctuary next Sunday for our very special service on Black Lives Matter. God bless. Namaste.